I think coming from another, or coming from a franchise that was beloved as well, I kind of got a feeling that this was going to hit in a certain way. And I think while we were filming, I was really mindful. We were all very mindful of like every decision that was made to make sure that it was representative of the book, of the community, and that you know you kind of run it through the shared experiences throughout the cast and crew who are LGBTQ, and you go, okay, like, does this make sense? Does this make sense? Does this make sense? And I think I just, I think I knew from the beginning that it was going to be something really important and something special and something that was going to just take off. So you didn't know how big you'd be in China now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in China. About uh, the book that was your first um, reaction that you just have to go, okay, do I forget all of that? But there's still like, there's just, Matthew did such a great job at adapting the screenplay and it was less of a, um, a like recitation and more of a, you know, more of an adaptation. I think it just, like I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. And when Peeves the Poltergeist was left out of the <laughs> first movie, I was freaking out. I was like, okay, this, you can't have this movie without Peeves. And then I saw the movie and I said, okay, we don't need Peeves. And we never saw him for what, eight movies? Seven yeah. movies? <laughs> and it was fun. Come on. Harry and so, I mean, that did happen with, what's my sister's name? June. Yeah, June. June. Yeah. June. <laughs> R.I.P. But it's okay. <laughs> you know? We, it, we didn't need her. Like, I think, sorry, I'm not I'm on a tangent. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop you before you hear something. <laughs> <laughs> it seems that for some people that live in Los Angeles or in these sort of like liberal circles, seem like, oh, I've seen that. There are so many kids that not only haven't seen that and haven't experienced it, and the, the aspect, like the joy and the acceptance and the like life affirming of seeing like a parent accept you because it's not an experience that every kid has. But I also think it's important for parents. Mm. I think to see like what an appropriate response is because a lot of people are just unprepared for these kind of conversations. And so I think that's part of what's exciting about this movie. It's really accessible, it's candy coated, it's bright, it's fun, it's silly, but it's really trying to spread love and acceptance and and the idea that people can forge their own path so i think sometimes people criticize um things for being too kind of like we're past that not everyone's past yeah. it i mean obviously I, I for me it would have made a huge huge difference mm -hmm. i mean the world is so so different now it's hard to even it's scary that it's hard to even comprehend the question because the world feels yeah. so different but um, I think that's one of the great joys of my life and I think the responsibility of all of us right now is to, I, used to, I started the video store in my tent, that's how old I am. <laughs> and, and so I just see everything always in like the shelf that like what section of the movie. Mm. And I see all the movies that like weren't there that we're getting to put there now mm. up on that shelf. And mm. so for me, it would be like, it would just be another box on the shelf, but there were a lot of empty boxes and empty shelves for like, you know, a kid who was growing up who felt different. It was tough. I was just telling Greg and Sarah before we walked in here that I've never had an actual premiere for a project that I've done. Oh. Uh, because oh. I, I, I cry <laughs> for me. Cry oh. for me. Oh. This is your premiere. Yeah, this is the premiere. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, I, mean, that's the, I guess, the fun part that everyone like looks forward to, and I haven't had to have that experience yet uh, because I had a film come out in 2021 and 2022, both in the COVID era. And then this film came out and, you know, we couldn't say anything about it. Um, so, yeah, it was tough because you want to bring your baby into this world and celebrate it. And luckily, you know, Amazon just knocked it out of the park and the fans loved it and um, it kind of just spoke for itself. I met Uma the day we did our first scene together. And so I wasn't lucky enough. To, uh, you know, I got to do scenes with Anish, with Nicholas, with Rachel. And then Uma was coming in from another project and I found out she was doing her accent, I wanna say like two days before principal photography mm. started. And I said, okay, gotta make a decision here. Uh, am I to do one, to not do one. And we just had lots of conversations with producers and with Matthew um, to just kind of shy away from it because I felt like 
I felt like Alex was a bit more of a chameleon um, than Uma was, but in, I mean, in real life as an actress, Uma is such a chameleon. Just the amount of projects that she does that she gets to really embody um, that character and you kind of lose her in it. From the moment we met, um, you know, I think she, we, she went to shake my hand and I'm like, I need a hug. I just <laughs> need to like, touch you. If you're my mom, like we need to have a moment because this is a, a nice scene we're doing. And actually this scene didn't make in the movie. This was the um, Shahi, Clifton, and me scene in the living room. It never made it. Uh, maybe maybe we needed a little time to bond. Uh, no, and it was great. And we just, we had- There were no cameras. There were no, yeah, no cameras rolling. But it, it was, I was very lucky to have Uma on set. She kind of anchored set. Um, she's just badass, comes to work. There's no messing around. Um, but in a fun way, she's just, she's a I, no, I love, I love.